uplifting to the fallen like the holy ganges savior of lost souls at mercy with knowledge of his past lives and through experience of his soul gifted to us today by this great yogi noble and greatly fortunate Sri Sopak requested it like with Bhagirath the legendary devotee in the land of Charuta in Nardiyat city the Lord bestowed his grace upon us completely without understanding my true self I suffered infinitely Divine true Guru Who explained that true self to me In the present dark times The true path to mock is conceived For true seekers to contemplate Here I have it openly revealed some perform rituals mechanically Some engage in dry philosophy Seeing them believe this to be the path to moksh Compassion arises in me Wallowing in rituals externally but not inwardly aware Rejecting the path of wisdom Are called mechanical ritualists here Bondage moksh are illusory They state merely in their words Yet their conduct stems from delusion these are the dry philosophizers Detachment and so on are fruitful when Combined with experience of the soul The very same virtues are needed if Experiencing the soul is our goal Without detachment and renouncement in one's heart The self can't truly be known But one strays from the quest for the soul If one stops at these alone Discerning whichever is appropriate Understanding what's needed in each case A genuine seeker of truth Acts accordingly always Devoting oneself to a true guru Casting preconceptions aside One Attains the ultimate truth Focus on the true self does arise Self-realized, equanimous Living to bear fruits of karma accrued Unique speech, mastery of all teachings Are the hallmarks of a true guru the benefit we gain from a true living guru Is greater than from a distant jinn 
without grasping such insight contemplation of the soul cannot begin without the teaching of a true guru jena's nature can't be understood without understanding what do we gain let's understand and realize jena heard scriptures that describe the soul and establish its existence support a worthy seeker in a true guru's absence for oh, one should immerse oneself in scriptures the true guru has advised contemplate them continually putting prejudice aside if one has restrained the hubris i know best attaining moksha is a short infinite souls have attained it this way says the jinna completely pure in the shelter of a true guru the hubris i know best is controlled adopting any other means it increases to fold renouncing dogma and the hubris i know best acting as per the true guru's vision is turned self realization as well as fundamental in its causation with hubris mighty foes like ego just can't be defeated taking the shelter of a true guru with minimal effort they are beaten the one who attains omniscience by a true guru's guidance even if that guru has yet to attain it the omniscient lord pays reverence the totally detached enlightened lord has declared this path of reverence only a fortunate few understand its deep spiritual significance if a non true guru of such reverence takes advantage of any kind they'll drown in the ocean of rebirth due to the great deluding karma they bind one who is a genuine seeker of truth does such thinking comprehend but the self righteous one misinterprets this thinking for their own ends in one who is self righteous focus on the soul cannot arise here the traits of the self righteous one impartially described they believe a true guru as one outwardly renounced even if not self realized or they favor a guru from the family tradition due to a sense of me and mine they perceive the height of a jinnah's body and splendors so 
such as their assembly to describe the essence of a jinnah and fixate their mind on these only when in the presence of a true guru they simply turn away instead confirming faith in a false guru showing piety for worldly praise classifying birthplaces like heavenly realms is seen by them as true teaching and they insist that moksha lies in their own sect and its code of dressing blind to the nature of their inner tendencies they feel pride in observing vows unwilling to accept the ultimate truth to uphold their worldly status somehow or they adopt the absolutist view but only verbally disregarding righteous observance puts the means to march out of reach worthy of neither the state nor the means to enlightenment gaining such a soul's association one drowns in embodiment such a soul is self righteous to seeking a claim for themselves they fail to attain the ultimate truth due to their unworthy without in a detachment nor the coming of the passion neither straight forward nor impartial the self righteous ones tragic condition i've stated the traits of self righteousness so that self righteousness can be removed now i'll state the traits of a true seeker through which in a place can in you experience of the soul is true monkhood and is the mark of a true even from one's family tradition isn't followed by a seeker true encountering a living true guru they count themselves supremely graced with mind speech and body in harmony the guru's commandments are in in all three times there is only one path that leads to the ultimate observance that inspires the ultimate alone should be adopted contemplating this they embark upon the quest for a true the motive taints to seek her true one whose passions have been calmed for whom moksha is the only desire one who's tired of rebirth and has compassion for all life is where the true quest for moksha resides one can't connect to 
Until such an inner state is reached Unable to attain the path to moksha They can't cure their inner disease When this inner state is achieved The Guru's teachings take effect Inspiring noble contemplation By which true happiness manifests Where noble contemplation manifests So does self-realization Through which one's delusion is destroyed And one attains the state of liberation to help understand the path to moksha And inspire noble contemplation I state here the six affirmations Through a guru-disciple conversation The soul exists it's eternal land It's the author of its own karma It spreads the fruit of this karma Moksha exists And the means to moksha is true karma The six affirmations stated briefly here are the six philosophies too Great saints have described them to explain the ultimate truth Its form be witnessed There is no other experience of it So the soul cannot exist Otherwise the soul is just the body Or is the senses or the breath With no differentiating it's wrong to think of it as separate Moreover, if the soul does exist Why can it not be known? If it does exist, it should be knowable Like pots and cloth and so on so the soul cannot exist And striving for more is futile Please show me how to truly resolve This inner doubt of mine We felt that the body and the soul Due to false identity But they are both totally distinct As is evident from their properties We felt that the body and the soul are the same Due to false identity But they are both totally distinct Like sword and sheath are separate entities The seer that is behind the vision The one who recognizes form By eliminating everything else Remaining at the end is the soul of the senses has experience of 
the objects of its own sense The objects of all five senses combined Are perceived in the soul's awareness The body does not know the soul Nor do the senses nor the breath Know that the presence of the soul empowers them Without it they are lifeless In every state the soul is always known to be distinct Evidently charged with consciousness its ever-present characteristic You know of pots and cloth and so on So take their existence as fact But you don't believe in the knower of them What kind of knowledge is that? Great intelligence in a small body Less in a larger one If the soul were indeed the body Then such anomalies wouldn't happen Lifeless matter and consciousness Are manifestly distinct by nature they can never both become one Their duality prevails forever The soul itself doubts its very own existence That the soul is the very one who doubts Astonishes beyond measure You've stated much evidence of The existence of the soul I can accept that the soul exists Thinking deeply on it but the soul can't be eternal This is the second doubt I'd like to raise The soul arises when the body is formed And ends when it disintegrates Otherwise the soul is momentary from one moment to the next That experience also suggests The soul's impermanence The body is just a composite It is material, visible and lifeless Experience can establish the beginning and end of consciousness. The one on whom we rely to observe the body's beginning and end must be totally distinct from the body in order to truly witness them. Whatever composite objects we see Are seen in the soul's experience Not itself arising from any combination The soul is ever present Consciousness arising from lifeless matter or matter from consciousness Has never ever been the object of 
anyone's experience The one that does not arise from many Other beings inherit tendencies such as being angry As traces from their previous life Establishing the soul's eternity As a substance, the soul is eternal But its states continually alter Childhood, youth, old age, all three are known by a single knower. The knower that has the knowledge that something is momentary can't themselves be momentary. Conclude this experientially. A substance can never ever be destroyed completely without trace. If consciousness ceases to be, contemplate what new form would it take? The soul does not author karma or oh, karma is created by karma Or it arises naturally or oh, karma is the soul's innate dharma The soul is ever free while bondage is created by nature Otherwise God inspires karma And so the soul is unfettered Therefore there is no purpose in Seeking the path to more Either authorship of karma does not exist or is never lost If consciousness isn't the inspirer then who attracts karma? Lifeless matter cannot inspire just contemplate on both of their natures If consciousness doesn't author it Then karma is not created So karma does not arise naturally Nor is it the soul's intrinsic nature If the soul is Totally unbound Why has it not been recognized? It's unbound From the ultimate perspective But only known when self-realized There is no God that creates karma God's nature is totally pure but if God is considered to inspire karma Such a motive would make God impure If consciousness is immersed in experiencing itself It authors its own pure nature When not experiencing itself It authors inclinations which induce Karma Accepting 
that's the soul of this karma It surely can't experience its fruits What can lifeless karma understand For effects to be produced Accepting God as giving fruits of karma The soul enduring them makes sense But if we say this about God Then God loses all godliness If we conclude that there is no such God There'd be no order in the universe There'd be no set location for the fruits of good and bad karma to be experienced Nations causing karma are the soul's own delusion So they are conscious in form The resulting vibrations in the soul's aura Cause material karma to be drawn Poisoned and nectar don't understand But bear fruit when they are consumed So the effects of good and bad karma Can be similarly assumed One a pauper and one a king And other such disparities There's no effect without a cause Good and bad karma are the cause of these Considering God as the giver of fruit Is not a belief that is needed Effects are produced as per the karma's nature When endured the karma is shed there's a set location to experience The fruition of each karma bound Dear disciple, I've summarized here A topic that's deeply profound The soul authors and endures karma yet moksha cannot be attained infinite time has elapsed yet the flaws which bind it remain doing good we enjoy fruits in places such as the heavenly realm there's nowhere we are karma free Since doing bad we suffer in hell Just as the fruitfulness of good and bad Karma has been shown Refraining from karma is fruitful too So moksha exists, so astute one Infinite time has passed Where the soul has authored Good and bad karma Moksha arises when we refrain From good and bad altogether Completely free from association Including with the body A liberated soul in eternal moksha Enjoys its own bliss unendingly Even if 
smoke she exists There's no indisputable means How can karma bound from infinite time Be wiped completely clean Oh many sects and philosophies Describe various different means I cannot determine Which of these paths to believe From which caste is moksha attained And in which form of dress The true path can't be determined with so many distinctions to assess. From all this we can deduce there can't be a path to mock. So what is the benefit in knowing about the soul and so on? Your responses to my five doubts Have resolved them totally If I only understood the path to more I'd be fortunate, fortunate, truly You've gained faith And replies with similar ease. You'll find that your faith in the path to march will rise. Karmic tendency is ignorance, liberation is residing in the self. By the light of wisdom Is the darkness of ignorance dispelled That which causes karma to be bound Is the very path of bondage The state destroying these causes Is the path to march ending in Attachment, aversion and ignorance Form the main karma binding knot Freeing oneself of these three Is the very path to more The soul is eternal consciousness From all delusions free By which this pure state is attained Is the path to march its means The types of karma are infinite Of these the main are eight Of these the main is deluding karma Which I'll teach you how to eliminate There are two types of deluding karma Perception and conduct deluding Imparted wisdom, total equanimous detachment Are means to overcome them surely Karma bound by passions like anger is Destroyed by virtues like forgiveness Everyone's personal experience agrees Where's the room for doubt in this? Casting away insistence and false ideas Philosophy and said The one who adopts the path prescribed Will have very few rebirths left 
Having contemplated the six affirmations, six sets of questions were posed. When all six affirmations are considered together, they constitute the path to more. Cast and dress are immaterial. If one walks on the path explained, one who strives this way attains liberation. Where no distinctions remain, one whose passions have been calmed, for whom moksha is the only desire. They're tired of rebirth, have inward compassion. This defines one who truly aspires. With the true Guru's wisdom, when such an aspirant is blessed, they attain the state of Sankit with a focus on their inner quest. Renouncing insistence on dogma and sect, with conduct as per the true Guru's vision. One attains pure samkhit, free from distinctions and division. When one's true nature is experienced, and focus and faith are held in it, as the ray of attention is directed to the self, that is the highest order of some gift. Deluded ignorance ceases as the some gift intensifies. Soul resides within, detached and totally equanimous. True conduct does arise when one experiences. One's true nature continually. This is called omniscience, liberation while embodied. Just as the dream of a million years ends when we awaken. So our delusion from beginningless time ends with self-realization. When you stop identifying with the body, you no longer are the karma, and you don't endure its fruits. This is the mystical essence of the. This very dharma leads to moksha. Your very nature is moksha itself. You are infinite perception and infinite awareness, and your bliss is boundless. Pure, enlightened, charged with consciousness, self luminous abode of bliss. Can be said. Contemplate to realize this. The realizations of all great saints concur and are contained in this. Stating this, he rested silently in effortless enlightened bliss. By the true Guru's imparted word, unprecedented insight is emanated. My true nature realized in the self. Ignorance has been eliminated. I realized my.
my true nature to be pure consciousness distinct from the body immortal indestructible and ageless the soul authors and endures karma when attention flows externally once attention flowed within authorship of karma ceased oh now authorship and experience are of its pure consciousness experiencing within itself its natural still awareness moksha is defined as soul's purity the true path is by which it is attained the entire path of the unfettered ones has been concisely explained oh my true guru ocean of boundless compassion you've bestowed your amazing grace on this lowly one what can i offer at your feet oh lord what is trifling compared to the soul and that to you have given to me at your lotus feet i surrender my all from today may my body may my all be devoted to you my lord i am a servant a servant a humble servant of my lord You shown that the soul is distinct from the body through the six affirmations you explained in the same way that the soul is distinct from its sheath this is your immeasurable grace no illness like self delusion the true guru is the healer for sure there's no regimen like the guru's instructions thought and meditation are the best cure if you seek the ultimate then genuine efforts must be made Don't use your circumstances as an excuse else the quest for the soul you'll forsake Listening to the absolutist view the means must not be rejected Keeping the absolutist view in mind the means should still be practiced the absolutist view hasn't been prescribed in isolation no has the conventional view adopt them both in combination imagined notions of the various sects can't count as righteous observers with no experience of one's true self that absolutist 
Souls can be like liberated souls Those who understand attain that state Contemplating Jinnah's nature And the Guru's commands Are instrumental for one to liberate One who rejects instrumental causes Asserting innate causation can't attain the state of the liberated ones And remains in a state of delusion Feigning wisdom in their speech But gripped by delusion inside Such a lowly soul is betrayed the truly self-realized Compassion, truth, equanimity Forgiveness, renunciation, peace And detachment are always alive In the heart of one who truly seeks Where delusion has been destroyed or is in a state of suppression this defines the self-realized state others claiming this state are mistaken one who sees the whole world as defiled or views it as a dream Describes one who self realized all others have mere book learning. Contemplating the first five affirmations with conduct according to the sixth, one attains the fifth affirmation. Why would any doubt exist? Who's in a state is as though they have no body Despite an embodied outer state Let us pay homage endlessly At the feet of that enlightened saint For Sri Sobhag and Sri Achar And for those who seek moksha as a goal I've imparted the means to happiness For the upliftment of worthy souls The means to the state of the enlightened one have been stated concisely and all six schools of philosophy stated briefly yet precisely Supreme Lord, my true Guru perfect wisdom abode of bliss to the one who showed me my true self May my veneration be endless Who's in a state Is as though they have no body Despite an embodied outer state Let us pay homage endlessly At the feet of that enlightened saint let us pay homage endlessly At the feet of that enlightened saint 
Let us pay homage endlessly At the feet of that enlightened saint